Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is a video uh, from the Demoscopy Made Simple series. Tonight we're going to talk uh, about the Reed Nevis. Now, a Reed Nevis is generally uh, a very characteristic lesion. First of all, it occurs in young people and it's black in colour and it grows rapidly. And for all those reasons, the patient's usually brought to you quite quickly. Now, in a young person, it usually occurs in the lower extremities. When you put your dermatoscope on it, it has a characteristic dermatoscopic appearance. And you get these uniform lined radial peripheral and some pseudopods. We'll look at these shortly. Now, these lines radial and the pseudopods are caused by rapidly growing nests of spindle-shaped cells at the dermoepidermal junction, and sometimes even intraepidermal, they're pushing up into the epidermis itself, giving you the dark black color. Um, this lesion does vary in appearance with time. It's like other nevi. They evolve, they change. So they will change with time, and eventually, you may lose uh, the pseudopod and lines radial pattern and develop into a uh, lines reticular pattern, the same way as other clod-like benign nevi change and evolve to the stable adult form. Now, for some people, the reed nevus is regarded as a variant of a spitz nevus. Other people like to separate it. I personally join the two together, although I've separated them for discussion in this uh, in this particular website. Let's have a little look at uh, an archetypical Reed Nevis. This one's courtesy of Gary Pelizari. There's the dark black lesion here. You stick your dermatoscope on it. Peripheral lines radial, but with a lot of pseudopods, thickened areas, thickened knobs at the ends of um, stalks that are connected to the body of the lesion. So that's a very typical appearance of... Uh, of a reed nevus. What about the others? Most of these um, have come from the Skin Cancer College of Australia and New Zealand's dermoscopy blog. And I'm very grateful to the various people who are mentioned here for uh, these images. This was one from the foot of a seven-year-old boy. Uh, and certainly, look at these lines radial peripheral here. Uh, and the other worrying thing is this sort of grey-blue structureless area in the centre. Now certainly if you saw that in an adult, um, especially when the lines radial peripheral is a bit asymmetrical here, you would get very worried uh, that it could be a melanoma and you'd cut it off. And in point of fact, a lot of reed nevi do end up getting cut off. If they're seen characteristically in a young person under the age of about 14, then you can quite safely leave them and watch them. But once you get the other side of 20, if someone presents with uh, a lesion like this, you are often very loath to leave it and uh, monitor it. And the vast majority end up being excised and submitted to the pathologist for exclusion of melanoma. So as I've said here with this one, worrying asymmetrical peripheral streaks, seven-year-old boy, but it was in fact a reed nevus. Here's another. This one is uh, courtesy of Wayne Meeklejohn from the uh, Skin Cancer College blog. 28-year-old female, darkly pigmented lesion on the triceps, the back of the arm. Now certainly that one would catch your eye. Very lonely in comparison to the other lesions round about. And when you put your dermatoscope on it, lots of lines radial peripheral. And perhaps a few little pseudopods there. Uh, again, this little area down here is uh, lined reticular, um, but very dark here. You can't really see anything much. Occasionally, uh, you can use some tape stripping, just sellotape stripping on these and lift off any black lamellae that are there. And sometimes you'll in fact see uh, a reticular, lined reticular network underlying this. But anyway... 28-year-old female, lesion like this, comes off. And it was a reed nevus. It wasn't uh, a melanoma. 
usually in a melanoma you'll have uh, asymmetrical um, lines radial peripheral and asymmetrical um, pseudopods as well rather than it involving the whole of the periphery of this particular lesion as it does. Here's another one. We talked about things varying with time, things maturing, things changing. This was the lesion on the forearm of a 10-year-old boy. This image is courtesy of Jean-Yves Grand from Paris. You can see the dark black lesion here. This was the initial dermoscopy. Lots of pseudopods, and I think they are pseudopods rather than um, just peripheral clods. Uh, but then two years later, this was monitored, two years later, this is what it had changed into. This was the dermatoscopic appearance there. A lot of grey, somewhat suggestive of some degree of uh, regression, some light brown there, not much of uh, lines reticular there. But it just shows you how these can uh, evolve with time. So, a read uh, nevus. Another one. 18-year-old male, dark lesion here. Don't know qu how quickly this came up. Very few others. This is the dermatoscopic appearance. Again, there's not really a lot of lines radial peripheral in this. Um, there's a dark, structureless, black structureless uh, area here. Some big clod-like lesions here. But uh, this would come off just because it's lonely, it's black, and if it came up quickly you would really need to exclude melanoma. Um, but this, in fact, was a, a reed nevus as well. The older they are, the more difficult it is to be certain about these, and uh, the more you should look at excising them. This was one of my own um, just recently, 12-year-old girl. Very few, in fact, no other nevi at all, and this suddenly grew up within a period, I think, of about six months. Uh, this was the dermatoscopic appearance, varying, you know, clods, peripheral clods here, I think, rather than pseudopods. Um, varying size as well. We usually regard varying size as a, a marker of potential uh, melanoma if it's in an adult. But uh, there's, you know, the sort of variations uh, acceptable in the child. Their parents did want this excised, we excised it. And it was diagnosed as a reed nevus, although this is the pattern that I commonly associate with uh, a spitz or a, a growing nevus. But presumably, histologically, it was regarded as a reed nevus because there were pigmented spindle cells that were seen on the histology. And this is often what uh, makes pathologists uh, give it the appellation of a reed nevus rather than a spitz or a growing nevus. So, a quick talk on uh, read or spindle cell nevi. The differential is a melanoma, usually with asymmetrical lined radial peripheral in the melanoma and uh, asymmetrical pseudopods as well, and generally in someone over the age of 20. Um, you should be very loath to diagnose a read nevus in someone in the late teens or uh, over the age of 20 uh, without taking uh, an excision biopsy of the lesion. Interesting things, very characteristic his, uh, dermatological appearance. I'm sure once you've seen it, you'll never forget it. Thank you very much.